Hi, Sergio Gomez with Cisco Tag Data Center Routing and Switching. Today I want to explain you the split horizon rule for IDGP. The IDGP split horizon rule is a mechanism used to avoid routing loops. When a BGP speaker receives an update message from another BGP peer located in its own autonomous system number, the receiving BGP speaker shall not distribute the routing information contained in that BGP update to other BGP speakers located in its own autonomous system number. In other words, routes received from an IBGP neighbor cannot be advertised to another IBGP neighbor. This behavior will be illustrated with the following lab. There are three ASN. ASN 100 represents an external customer advertising the network 10.4.4.1 32. ASN 500 represents an internal network where you interconnect with external customers. ASN 200 represents another external customer. You can verify the 10.4.4.1 route on R501. This BGP speaker must receive and install the route as the route is coming as eBGP. From the routing table, you can validate that the route is known in ASN 500 and the distance 20 matches with the administrative distance of eBGP. You can also check the BGP table. You can see that the route is external. The IBGP split horizon can be seen on R502. If you check the BGP table in router 502 for 10.4.4.1, you will see the route as not advertised to any peers. If you check on R503, you do not find the 10.4.4.1 prefix in either the routing table or in the BGP table. There are some options if you need to advertise the route to R503. 1. Configure confederations. This is not covered in this video. 2. Configure full mesh. This implies to have an IBGP session from other routers between each other. In this example, an IBGP session from R501 to R502, from 501 to 503, and from 502 to 503. To illustrate the full mesh behavior, I can configure an IBGP neighbor between R501 and R503. IP reachability inside the AES500 is done with OSPF. Now, all you need to do is to add the BGP configuration in R501 and R503. Checking the BGP neighbors in R503 now will display an IBGP neighbor to R501 and it is receiving the route directly from it. The problem with full mesh is that it does not scale well because you need to establish multiple IBGP sessions based on the number of IBGP speaking devices. The number of IBGP sessions needed are calculated with the following formula, where n is the number of IBGP routers. Option 3. Use a route reflector. The route reflector concept comes from the need of reducing the number of BGP sessions and control plane processing. Instead of a router peering with every other BGP router within the same AES, instead, each BGP speaker peers with a route reflector. Prefixes send to the route reflector are then reflected to all the other BGP speakers with the next three rules. Rule number one. If a route reflector receives a prefix from a non-route reflector client, the route reflector advertises the prefix to a route reflector client, and it does not advertise the prefix to a non-route reflector client. Rule number two. If a route reflector receives a prefix from a route reflector client, it advertises the prefix to client and non-client devices. Even route reflector client that advertises the prefix will receive a copy of the route, but it discards the prefix because it sees itself as the route originator. Rule number three. If a route reflector receives a route from an eBGP peer, it advertises the route to route reflector clients and non-clients. To show the route reflector behavior, R502 is configured as a route reflector. The only configuration required is to add the IBGP peers as route reflector clients inside R502 configuration.
with R502 acting as the route reflector. You can check R503 route for 10.4.4.1 and now the route is received. I hope you find this video useful. Thanks for watching.